Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and today I'm reviewing a Blitzwolf product that I've received free of charge from Banggood for this review video and this is the Blitzwolf SS5 or BW SS5 which is a smart switch module and this is one of those really small factor ones that you should be able to hide behind your regular light switch into your switch box. So very similarly just like a Sonoff Mini or one of the Shelly like 1 PMs or two, uh, two and a halves. So this can convert a regular light switch to a smart light switch. In terms of the main specs, this is designed to be multi-voltage. So it works from 110 to 240 volts. The relay inside is a 10 amp relay, which I think it's uh, pretty standard for a light switch or a light switch circuit. So it can switch up to like 2300 watts on a 240 mains voltage. And actually there are two different models available from this uh, SS5. There is a one gang version and there is two gang version. So I have the one gang version. So for a two gang version, the labels and of course the wiring is going to be slightly different. Similarly to the mini or the Shelly products, this requires the live and the neutral to be connected. So it's, uh, it's none of those uh, single live wire versions. So you definitely have to have neutral and live also available in your switch box as a, you know, electrical connection. The other notable feature that this device comes with this clip. So if I remove it, you can see that if you are not installing the SS5 behind a switch, then you can use this. Well, basically this is a mount. So there are a couple of screw holes. So if you want to screw it to a stud or, you know, inside a wall or maybe like a special cabinet, you can do that. And in the back, these clips are actually uh, the DIN rail clips. So it can be also mounted on a DIN rail. And then the actual unit is held on by this uh, bracket securely on a DIN rail. So it is quite versatile in terms of the mounting options. The unit comes in a very small box. It also has a feedback leaflet and a very small user manual, which comes in multiple languages, but it's only a couple of pages for each language. Probably the only thing which uh, worth mentioning from this documentation is that you get some wiring diagrams for this, uh, uh, for both the one gang and the two gang version as well. Let me spend a little bit of time just to explain how you wire this unit up. I mean, you just seen the picture just uh, previously, but let me just talk through the various connection. So starting from the left, you have an N and the L uh, connection. So this is neutral and live. So that's where you connect your fixed mains supply. So neutral and live. And then the next two connections in this unit is it labeled L1 and L1. Of course, in a two gang version, that would be L1 and the L2. These are the outputs that go to your lamp. So these are the switched live lines that you connect your device to. And of course, whatever device, I mean, the lamps that you are controlling from the L1 and the L2 connection. So those go to the lamp. And of course, the lamp on the other terminal gets connected to the neutral. That's how you close the circuit. And then finally, the last two connections are S1 and S2. And again, in my model, because I have only one gang, it's both labeled as S1. And these are the switch connection there. So that's where you connect your regular switch and you are switching the live mains voltage into the unit. So again, the neutral gets connected here. The main live gets connected here. These are the lives that are connect, uh, that go to the lamp that you want to control. And the switches are connected between L and S1, or if you have a two gang version between L and S2. There is no other control on this device. There is an LED on the top, which is going to flash when you are in pairing mode, but um, that's pretty much it. Now you can see that the SS5 is already wired up. And because these connections are really close together, I, that's why I thought it's easier just to explain it without, without this is all being wired up because it, it just gets uh, quite a bit messy. As you can see, the connections are quite a bit recessed into the case. And also when once you screw in the, uh, the screws as well, those are quite recessed as well. So that minimizes the, you know, the shock hazard. Uh, it's not that easy to you know, to touch the terminal. But obviously this uh, unit is designed to be hidden away. So neither the wires or the terminals can be accessed or accidentally touched by anyone. So the mains is coming in through this uh, black cable and I have a regular toggle switch and that operates the output, which is the light. And as I said, this is the one gang version. So on a two gang version, you will have two switches 
and of course two lights and as you can see the L1 and the S1 so basically the second L1 and the second S1 connection on this unit is not connected that those would be the out or the input or the output for the second gang I've already done the device pairing so you can see the BWSS5 in my Tuya app by the way you can use uh, Tuya Smart, Smart Life or the Blitzwolf app to control this out of these three I like the Tuya Smart app the best so I'm going to use that but it's going to be pretty much the same in the other two apps as well the pairing process was fairly easy my unit did not go into the pairing mode immediately when I powered it up and to get the unit into pairing mode you have to switch it on and off using the switch five times and then after that it goes into the pairing mode and you will notice that this blue LED which is under this small hole is going to blink you know the usual I think probably two hertz blinking pattern and that is going to indicate that it's in pairing and then you can just click on the plus button and I selected the Wi-Fi switch so this one that you see in the switch section the first one that's the Wi-Fi switch and then of course you follow the on-screen instructions and that was it and now I have it on the screen if you select the two gang version probably the visuals are going to be slightly different one thing I do like about this one gang version is you have this on off switch here on the main screen so you don't have to go into the you know the detail screen if you just want to switch it on and off and you also have this down arrow and then this pop-up window comes up and you can operate it from here as well or you can activate the countdown easily from here oh those are a lot of seconds okay I don't want to count down and of course if you click on the actual button then you go into the detail screen where it's again fairly simple you have a big switch on switch off button you also have a separate switch button on the lower left which is, does exactly the same as the main icon next to the switch is the countdown option so if I turn on this uh, output and I click on countdown and I specify well you can specify hours or minutes I'm going to keep it zero hours and five minutes let's say you can only do five minute increments and as you can see it's going to get switched off after five minutes so this is not an automatic thing you have to do it uh, every time uh, manually so it's like a sleep function in a TV you press it and then you know after 15 minutes or half an hour the TV is going to switch off the next one is the schedule and you can create schedules where you specify the hour and the minute you can also specify if it should repeat a certain number a certain days of the week and you can specify whether that at that particular time the unit should either turn on and off and of course you can have multiples of these defined so you know turn on the lights at 6 a.m turn it off at I don't know 5, uh, 8 a.m unfortunately you can only specify hour and minute not things like sunrise and sunset but um, that's what you have in schedule that's the main user interface I mean it's just a simple switch you don't get a lot of uh, options here let's go into the settings and see what you can do here of course on the first one you can uh, change the icon if you want a different icon you can even use your own photo as a as an icon you can change the name and also you can change the location so which room this device is the next few options are only you know information screen about the device and what automations you have created for it I haven't created anything so that would be empty you can see that it can be controlled using Alexa or Google Assistant as well you can switch on offline notification so that would give you a warning if the device have gone online and in the rest of the features you can share the device so if your family members also have a two-year account you can share the device to them so they can operate it as well and you can also link them into a group so the devices that are in the group will be operated simultaneously so it's like a two-way or a three-way switching and the rest of the options are you know feedback and add the device to the home screen if this is something that you want to operate it very often so you don't have to come into the two app you can operate it from your you know the home screen and check the device status and do firmware updates if necessary so these are the device options and the device features so what we can do now is we can look at what sort of automations options are available I click on smart and I'm going, going to click, click on plus and I don't want to set up anything I just want to see the different options that are available in triggers 
So let's say how you can use this device to trigger an automation. So I'm just going to select when device status changes, BWSS5. And of course you have the option to switch. So you can create an automation which triggers when this device gets either turned on or turned off. That's fine. And you also have this Kandan and I couldn't really figure out how to use Kandan. It's available in many of the other devices. <clears throat> And let's also see what's available on the action side. So on the action I select run device, SS5, and again we have the switch option. So we can create something to turn the device either on or off, or the on off is actually a toggle. So if it was on, it gets turned off and vice versa. So basic switch functions, but that's pretty much what we need from a switch. So I think that's absolutely fine. As you can see, the countdown is still running. I just wanted to show you one more thing. So this unit works with a traditional toggle switch. And uh, just one small thing. So for example, if it's connected like this, now you can see that if this uh, switch is in the down position, so that half is pressed, then the light is on. Oh, by the way, the countdown expired. But now, because the, the software has changed the state of the switch, uh, I need to now, you know, change the physical switch to either, you know, turn it back on. So now at this position of the switch, the light is on. So this is now the off position. But if I switch it on from the mobile, now this becomes the on position and this becomes the off position. It's not a big thing, but, you know, sometimes you, you tend to remember how you turn something on and off. And maybe, it, you know, if it changes this physical state, that might be confusing. But that's really just the, you know, the way it works. Uh, you can't really do anything about that, unfortunately. And that would be my review of the Blitzwolf BWSS5 Smart Switch. If you like this product, I'm going to leave purchasing links in the video description. But that would be all for now. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.